Warriors, it's Victoria, and just coming to you from my office, though it looks like I'm in Hawaii, isn't that fun? I'm having a lot of fun with these backdrops, and it's been a really long time since I've done a video, so I'm really looking forward to getting back into them. I felt like I just needed a really fresh new look, so I, I hope this works. Let me know what you think of it, if it works for you or if it just looks too fake, uh, but anyway, it's very soothing, I think. And, you know, I just want to give a shout out to Haley Ann in the Academy for requesting this video. I had done a post about meeting your own needs, and she had asked me if I had a video on it. So I didn't. And this is a really important part of my journey in recovery. And it started when I was working with Alex Howard of the Optimum Health Clinic. He was my coach for quite some time. And I... Uh, I came to understand that I was an Enneagram type two, which is the helper. And I'm also an empath, which means I'm a very empathic person. And those two combined uh, made it really easy for me to not be aware of my own needs because empaths tend to be very outward oriented and focused on other people. And um, so do helpers. And so uh, it's really been a process for me learning how to meet my own needs, how to identify what they are. So I just wanted to share a few things with you that helped me on my journey with that. And I want to start with this quote, which I'd actually put in the academy. And it was, don't be dependent on others to meet your needs. They'll let you down every time. And that's because meeting your needs is not their job. That's your job. And so I remember in our coaching session when Alex pointed that out, it was like, ouch, you know, I didn't realize that I was looking to other people to meet my needs. But what I came to understand as I examined my beliefs, there was this underlying belief that if I met other people's needs, that they would meet my needs, that it would be this back and forth kind of thing. And yet, if you're suffering with CFS, and if you have this personality type, you're probably aware that that's not always the case. And so what I think happened to me a lot in my journey was I, became, I was giving and giving in different areas and not replenishing myself and meeting my needs. And I ran dry. And then I get hit with Epstein-Barr virus and the rest is history and getting CFS. So um, it's been a real interesting journey changing those patterns. And the first thing is developing awareness of the pattern. So becoming aware of your pattern to give, noticing what that comes from and sitting with that and being with it and just identifying when that comes up, identifying what the feelings are around that when maybe you're looking for someone else to meet that need. If you're feeling a bit of a yearning or an emptiness, like, okay, what is it that I want? And then let me see if I can give that to myself. So whether it's an emotional need or a physical need, it's a starting point to noticing and being aware and accepting that I have legitimate needs and that I am responsible for taking care of those. And so the next thing that was really helpful for me was learning how to shift into my own body and be in my own frame. Again, as an empath, which many CFSers are, I've come to understand as I've taught to them, is that we tend to be outward oriented. We're out there, we're merging with other people. We're very intuitive about what's going on with other people, but we're not paying attention to what's going on in here. So a lot of it is just learning to calm that system down, calm down our nervous system and be in the body. And one way you can do this is just simply, you know, put a hand on the chest, Take a deep breath, notice your breathing, notice the sounds around you, what you see, maybe noticing the weight of your uh, body on the surface that you're lying or sitting on. So those are just ways to slow it down, bring yourself into a pause and be in your body. There's safety in the body. You're not gonna get safety from being out there in or with other people, you find safety in your body. And that is just an automatic calm to the nervous system, which we need in chronic fatigue syndrome. And so another way that you can do this is when you're out with people, practice the 80-20 rule. And that's where you're 80% aware of what's going on for you, your body, your thoughts, your feelings. 
and 20% on what is going on around you. Now, this was a reverse for me. Typically, I would have been so involved in other people and what was going on and chatting, you know, 20% on myself and 80% on everyone else. So it's a really helpful tool when you're with people, if you happen to have this pattern um, and that you can shift that and you can begin to shift and be in your body when you're with other people. So that's a real important aspect to meeting your own needs, because that's how once you're in your body, you can actually connect within and understand what it is that you need. And so another thing that I do is I ask, what do I need? You know, in this moment, if I'm experiencing when I was experiencing symptoms, what do I need right now? And then take care of myself. I think that often I was running myself so far in the ground that I was actually looking to my husband to help me set limits or, or my mom or someone else in my environment to help say, hey, you need to take it, you know, take a chill pill, relax, go kick your feet up. But I was just driving myself. And so there was a never ending, you know, to do list. And so I wasn't setting limits for myself. And so uh, by asking myself, what do you need? What I discovered then is, oh, maybe I need a rest. Maybe I need to go give myself a face massage. But that gets you out of the push and crash cycle by asking what you need and then providing yourself what, what it is that you do need. And then, of course, the question that follows that is, how can I meet that need? What can I do to take care of myself right now? And that was like a staple question for myself all through my recovery once I learned these principles. Um, with CFS, people often don't understand the illness, and so we don't receive appropriate compassion and care. So it's really important that we give those things to ourselves. It's important to speak in loving words to yourself, to love yourself, perhaps write a kind letter to yourself, a supportive letter, and learn to turn off that inner critic. Another strong need that I had was for encouragement. You know, when you're in the fight to get your life back and most people don't even realize you're in a fight, uh, you can really get discouraged. My journey was set was full of setbacks as most people have and discouragement. And so it's very, I found it very important to encourage myself and inspire myself on a daily basis. And the ways that I did that were like, I'll tell you, if you need encouragement, Joel Osteen is a master encourager. He's one of my favorite pastors. And he just listening to his message just fed my soul and reminded me that I could come through this. Um, I also love to do my daily Bible readings that brings inspiration, encouragement, uh, practicing gratitude, time in nature. I would often just sit in my garden and maybe journal or on positive things or focus on gratitude, you know, getting my brain in that right direction. And then um, also I started sharing quotes and ideas on Facebook and that really helped inspire me while I was helping others to get inspired in their journey. So anyway, these are just a few things that helped me when I was in my journey to recovery from chronic fatigue syndrome. And so just think about what are some of the things that you need and then how can you go about gently meeting those needs? This is a really critical piece, I think. And uh, anyway, thanks for listening. I wish you the very best in your recovery and I speak life, health and wholeness over you. Take care, warriors.